Welcome back. Tonight, a new lawsuit against a major Utah bank claiming it failed to report suspicions of fraud over a man accused of running a multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme. The allegations were first reported last fall when the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filed an action against the estate of Stephen Swenson, a once highly regarded financial advisor, after his June 2022 suicide. That report claimed that Swenson had embezzled $30 million from dozens of his own clients. Tonight, 2 News investigative reporter Darby Sparks has this new lawsuit and also the accusations that come along with it. Darby. That's right. Court documents show the Bank of Utah was the place where Swenson handled the majority of his business dealings. Now, a dozen of his former clients want to be reimbursed by the bank for their combined $15 million loss. The lawsuit filed on their behalf claims that by sitting on its suspicions, the bank played an essential role in the embezzlement, violating federal law in the process. Most of Steven Swenson's clients discovered they were victims of fraud after his death, including Courtney Hall's parents. In a November interview, she said they trusted Swenson with direct access to their finances for years without question, only to find their entire life savings gone. I remember my dad saying, well, that's 50 years of hard work down the drain. Hall's parents are among the dozens mentioned in the lawsuit against the Bank of Utah. According to the suit, Swenson embezzled his clients' retirement funds by having them move their money into a self-directed IRA account that he had control over. He encouraged them to sign over their bank statements so he could withdraw from, you know, where they were banking at and invest it. Once Swenson had control of his clients' self-directed IRA accounts, the lawsuit says he would create false documents, normally requiring an in-person signature. The bank would then authorize the transfer of funds from his client's old IRA account to the new one. These would be transfers of hundreds of thousands of dollars, emptying their entire retirement savings and putting it into this account. Now that he had control of the account with the funds in it, Swenson would wire the funds over to his Wells Fargo account under the name Crew Capital. The lawsuit claims that this was the false investment firm where he would embezzle the funds and use it for his own spending. Lastly, the lawsuit claims that Swenson convinced the bank to stop sending account balance statements to his clients and to go through him instead to cover up any large withdrawals. According to the lawsuit, the bank never spoke with Swenson's clients when making these large transfers and investments. The lawsuit claims the fraud was so obvious, a new employee picked up on it during training, but was told not to worry about it. One person was in charge of handling most of the account transactions for nearly a decade. Vice President and Senior Trust Officer Jody Buckner submitted into evidence a transcript of an alleged recorded conversation that took place two days after Swenson committed suicide. In it, Buckner admits to a former associate of Swenson's that she had suspicions of a Ponzi scheme throughout the years, but failed to report it, a legal requirement. The transcript allegedly also shows Buckner giving out confidential financial information. It makes plans to withhold the news of the scheme from upper management in time to clear names. But when asked about the lawsuit, the Bank of Utah immediately responded, denying any knowledge or associations with Swenson's plan. They sent to News a lengthy written response, summarizing that the IRA accounts were self-managed and legally authorized to be controlled by Swenson, and what he did with the funds was out of their control. Furthermore, they claimed Jody Buckner had no involvement nor knowledge of Swenson's scheme. The lawsuit claims the Bank of Utah should have never allowed Swenson to take control of his clients' accounts, stating the documents his clients signed were illegitimate because they weren't notarized. It also claims the bank broke federal law by allowing him to act as a financial advisor while investing client funds into Crew Capital, which allegedly was known to be owned by Swenson. For 2 News Investigates, I'm Darby Sparks. Thank you, Darby. The lawsuit against the Bank of Utah 150 pages long with a detailed and complex list of accusations. So on our website right now, you'll be able to see more and read them and read, of course, the bank's entire response to all of this. A very detailed report there.